In this video, we're going to focus on the task section of managing your transaction. Now, if you've already applied a task template, you should have your task list already put, put together. So all you have to really do is work through those tasks. Um, and you, or you can manually apply a template from here as well, whichever version works. Uh, because if you did a property template and you could include a task template with that, so it might, might have already been applied, but maybe you find out a certain special condition where, oh, I need, there's a certain task list that I need to do now because of XYZ. And so you can manually apply a template as well after the transaction has been created. Now, sometimes maybe you need to manually add in a task, uh, just something kind of off the top. You're like, oh, I'm just going to throw this into this one particular transaction in here, not something I would do every single time on um, this list, this task list. So I'm just going to add this in manually. You can do that here by clicking the add task. You can pick a date, market is critical, or pinned. Uh, so in this case, for example, I'll just go ahead and say for Monday, I'm going to pin this to the top so I see this first thing and say this is a reminder to check in. Check it on what? Who knows? But that's going to be my reminder. So go ahead and submit that. And you'll see it's added a pinned section here at the top because I didn't have anything pinned prior. So this has pinned it to the top. And the way I have it um, ordered here is by the scheduled tasks and the unscheduled tasks below that. So all the things with due dates will be here. Anything without a due date will be at the bottom. This one's waiting three days after I complete this first task, then this will be due, and then it would join the scheduled task as well. So in this spot here, you'll see I've had my pinned task. You see it's been pinned here. I can mark it as critical as well. I can add some internal details on this task if, you know, something special that people need to know. I can set up some different date options. So I already plugged in a manual date for Monday, but maybe I wanted to do something conditional. So right now it's just set to nothing. If I do property date, I can say, you know, five, business days, when, after, you know, a certain field or certain date field rather. So I could do that as well, setting up the uh, calculation here or base it on a different task. So kind of what you're seeing here with the parent and child task. This one is reliant on this guy here for, for the due date. And then over here, we'll have the triggers as well, which I'll go over uh, in a little more detail once I get down to this one. You can also set these to be recurring so you want this task after you've closed it, open up, reopen it again in three days or a specific date. And then the last option here will be to actually delete out this task. I mean, I don't actually need to create this one. I didn't, I didn't need this at all. I don't even need to complete it. I just want to delete it. And then for actually completing the task, you'll have the checkbox here. You just click on that and it'll jump it over here to the completed section. I can set a color label to this task. And we'll talk a little bit more about why that's important with the filters here. And then here I can select multiple tasks. So if I want to do multiple things here, set a date, due date for them all, set a color for them all, delete them all, whatever I'm trying to do. As well as, as that exact fun functionality, I can select all of them or none of them, just kind of lumping that together. <laughs> here you'll see the due date, whether it is due today or past due, it'll just show as being due if it's due in one day or if it's due in two days and this will also reflect with your health bar so you can see this one's due today it's marking it red i have one due tomorrow coming up that's marked here as well and then one due in two days if it's anything past that or it's not scheduled at all it just won't it won't reflect that in the health bar it's just showing you those more things coming up more recently you can also exclude this task from the portal views so the agent portal view or the client portal view um, yes client portal view <laughs> or adding notes again to this particular task so we can see that. This link just lets you know if it's been linked to, you know, some sort of other task or to actually link it. I'm not gonna do that. Here you'll have tags you can set as well. Uh, maybe you want to mark all, all of your introductory emails or something with a certain tag. So you can go in here, add a tag, say introduction task or introduction, and then you can filter by those tags as well. The roles is how you're going to assign these to your different users on these teams. You'll notice I can't actually select a user because it's not really based on the user. It'll show me the user that's assigned, but it's based on the role. So what's handy about that is when you have a certain team and you have a certain role, for example, I have email specialist here with Stewie and it's not, it's, it's finding Stewie on my team and assigning him, but I didn't select Stewie. And this lets you have more control over trying to reassign that to somebody else. Maybe Stewie is uh, taking a vacation or he's no longer with the team. Well, 
how am I going to handle Stewie's tasks? What am I going to do with those? All you have to do is go into your team organization and move the email specialist label from Stewie to David. And suddenly all of these tasks here will be updated to David instead of Stewie. And that's all you need to do is flip around the, the team role or the, the um, yeah, team role. Now, moving on there. If you have follow boss integration, you can also assign a task and push it over through that integration. If you're not using follow boss, don't, don't even pay attention to that. Now, a cool thing here, we'll go over some of the filters. If you look at this button, it'll let you change up the, how these tasks are sorted. So right now it's being sorted by scheduled and unscheduled by the dates. Or I could do it by user sorted order, or I could just drag and drop it in whatever order that I want it to be in. The next one here lets me close up the, these details. So if I don't really need to see this, because most of the time you probably won't need to see that. You're just really focused on the task itself. You can minimize it. So you're just seeing, seeing the task details. If you want to filter this down by, by a certain person. So this is the people we have assigned on the team here. So I have Peter and I have Stewie. Well, I want to see Stewie's tasks. It's going to update and show me. Okay, these are all, this is what Stewie's supposed to do. Again, if I want to see those details, I can click it here or here. Either one does the same thing. And then next, I can do a group by tag. I don't have any tags, so there's nothing to really filter down here. But if I had, you know, just want to see my introduction tasks, if I had a whole big different task list that was different tags, I could just say, I just need to see this grouping. This is what we're doing first. Same thing for the colors. So if I had marked all these different tasks here, so let's go ahead and give this one a, a blue. I'm going to look for yellow. Well, I don't have any yellow tasks, so nothing pops up, but I'm going to go ahead and look for that blue. And there it is. And then here you can sort or rather filter by your triggers. So this is the task that has a tr trigger. Go ahead and click on that. I can see what the trigger is. When this task is completed, go ahead and send an email template. And in this case, it wouldn't say the name of the email template, but for mine, it just says email template. That's just how I built it. But that could be by our introduction email or something. If you click on the email button here, you give me a couple different options. I can actually edit the email or just inspect it. If I just want to inspect it, it gives me a quick preview. What is it going to, that's going to send? I really did put a whole lot in here. It's just a hello. <laughs> or you can edit the email. Now, the thing to keep in mind with editing the email is if you have any merge fields that are plugged into this, they will be fully rendered out. And if they're missing, and then you go and update that, that field later, it's not going to pull that in because you've fully rendered the, the, the email already. So you'll have to manually add that in, just something to keep in mind. And then and there should be a warning here. If I try to edit it, it tells me exactly that. And I can say yes, and then go ahead and start building it out. So if there were any merge fields, it would pull the information at this point. But if they're missing again, you have to either manually add it or you can ignore it. All right, and just a quick touch into the triggers there. Um, just one of the other options that you can do as well with these is when you want that to happen. So I have this set up to be when the task is completed. I can also do when the task is not completed. So maybe I have a task that I'm waiting on some documents. Maybe I want to send a quick text message to the buyer's agent or something, right? So I can say, oh, let's go send a text message. I can add that in. See, it's grayed out. I haven't enabled it yet, but I can put together a text message just saying, you know, hey, hey, J Jim, just checking in to see if you had those documents and then set up a time. So for example, maybe let's do nine in the morning do it maybe, I don't know, three days after this task isn't completed. Of course, it doesn't make sense for a buyer introduction, but you get the idea here. So after three days, and then do you want business days, calendar days, I'm going to do business days, update. You'll see now it's been scheduled. I still need to put in a text message, but this could be right ready to go. Obviously, it's giving me an error because I didn't put in the, the text message here, but just throw in something real quick. Let's see. Okay. And then if I close that out, well, it's still show, showing me, oh, there you go. <laughs> it didn't quite update yet. So now uh, that one is ready, ready to go. If I don't complete this task in three days, it's going to send off this text, text message to one of my contacts. So again, really useful for like reminders and stuff. You know, this, you're just waiting on somebody else. You can have the system automatically kick out some sort of reminder. And then if you just need to delete that, you can go, boop. I just need that one trigger. And the last one here, that'd be looking for your critical tasks. Well, let's go ahead and turn off some of these other filters. Oh, now you're gonna hear Stewie. All right, critical tasks, and there we go. It's just the one, one task that I had marked as critical. And of course, if I clear all the different filters, 
back to my normal task list. You can also look by a certain template. So if you've applied multiple task templates, you can narrow that down to which one you want to look at or just all tasks. You can actually look for a specific email by searching for it, or not email, but a uh, task here. So introduction, my introduction email. If there's any other things that said introduction in it, it would pull those up and pull those in as well. And then going again, completing this, I'm just gonna say, okay, we're done with that check check-in. It's gone, it's been updated. Go over the complete section, I can see that this has been marked and done. And then just the last spot here would be your options. Just a couple different things you could do. Deleting all of the tasks completely. So every task that's in there is gone. So if you need a fresh start, or maybe you just need to get rid of a certain template that has been applied. Uh, maybe there's, again, a special condition for, I don't know, you found out there's a septic and there's something you need to do. And actually that was not true. You can come in and just delete your special conditions task list, you know, something like that. So just one specific template rather than all of them. And then back here at our active tasks, all the ones that will be due. So going through that, hopefully it'll help out and you can explain all the different little options and details there. Uh, again, I'm really a big proponent of putting together a template. So most of this is already done for you. All you end up really having to do is come in, look what you need to do and do so. And in this case, since I already have the trigger, all I really need to do is complete this it's going to queue up my trigger for that email that should be sending out. So for example, I'll just go and show you real quick. Go ahead and complete that. It's going to say, okay, hey, your, your email is ready to go. It's been pushed to the queue. Well, awesome. I'm going to open this up. I can see this is the email from that trigger. Gives me, again, this last, last chance to inspect it, make sure everything looks good. Okay, that looks great. Go ahead and send it out. And then I am done with that task until tomorrow, or rather this transaction. <laughs> So hopefully that will uh, keep keep you in line and make sure you're getting everything that needs to get done completed.